Hey guys, in this video, we're going to review basic assembly of the G100 gel coat dump gun, how to handle it, and proper spray technique. Now, if you haven't seen it already, it might be helpful to review my unboxing video to understand what's in the box and each of the individual parts. All right, let's assemble it and test it out. First, let's attach our air hose fitting. As always, use some type of thread sealant and screw that in tight. For the video, I'm just going to use a straight quick connect fitting, but in actual use, you're going to want to be able to move the hose and keep it out of the way when spraying. I like to use a swivel fitting on a whip, but an elbow is also a good choice here. Use what works best for you to keep it out of the way and give you more clearance. Now before going any further, let's test this right now. Attach an airline that's bringing in at least 60 psi. That's enough to seat the O-rings. Anything less and you might get a false positive. You hear that? Nothing? That's good. The gun should have been tested from the factory and at 60 psi or higher, it should not leak. If it's leaking air out of the air coupler, well that's an assembly error. Go back and get that sealed up. But if it's leaking air out of the trigger or out of the air nozzle, you can try and fix that by replacing the O-ring. But for a new gun out of the box, you absolutely should not have to do this. I burned a lot of time addressing this very thing. I want to save you guys from the same. This is my original gun. I've had this for over 10 years. I know it looks a little different. It's actually the G200 with an external mix feature that I've actually never used. But for all practical purposes, it's the same gun. This is the gun I just showed you. This is the gun I bought for the purpose of making these videos. Straight out of the box from the supplier, again, no leaks. Now this is the exact same gun. I also just bought it and I actually bought it first from another supplier and it's leaking like a sieve. Now when I close the flow control valve, you can hear and feel it coming out of the trigger. When I open the flow control valve, you can hear it coming out of the air nozzle. This should not be happening. I've replaced all the O-rings with the manufacturer recommended rebuild kit and it still leaks. Now you might have a gun that over time develops a leak. That's normal and we'll learn how to address that. But if this thing leaks right out of the box, I'd strongly consider sending it back, getting a replacement and not even messing with it. But if everything's good, let's move on to the next step and attach the pull ring assembly. Now the pull ring is what secures the cup to the gun. And that's simple enough, screw that in here with the smaller Allen wrench. Now it might have a little play in it and that's fine. Just make sure it's secure. Once that's assembled, just set it and forget it. There's no need to disassemble that unless it needs to be replaced. All right, next, if it's not attached already, screw your nozzle into the lid. No need to torque this down, finger tight is fine. Now you can put something like a silicone compound on the threads to make sure it doesn't seize up, but I've never had any problems. Just clean it after every use. Now in another tutorial, we'll go into detail on how to batch and catalyze gel coat efficiently directly in the paper cup. Once that's ready, we can place the paper cup in the reusable poly cup. Before doing that, here's a pro tip. Drill a small hole in the bottom of the poly cup. These paper cups will seat tenaciously inside the poly cup after use and can be really stubborn to get out when you're done and ready for cleanup. Don't make the mistake of trying to wrestle this out with pliers or you just have a big mess on your hands. Instead, a quick shot of air makes that cup pop right out. Also, do not secure the paper cup and lid directly to the gun with the pull ring assembly. This is a mess all over your floor just waiting to happen. And while you can do it, unless of course you've drilled that hole out, I also recommend that you do not put material directly in the poly cup. This will just lead to additional unnecessary cleanup. Instead, get used to using these paper cups as consumables and this method of paper in plastic is the way to go. Place the lid on top of the paper cup and seat it firmly all the way around. All right, now that that's ready, secure the gun onto the entire cup assembly, keeping it upright. It might be a little snug getting on and that's good, but make sure you're getting it all the way seated. This is not seated. It should look like this. If it's not all the way seated, there's a good chance it'll negatively affect the spray pattern. Get it seated, a little silicone grease and a wiggle and getting it aligned just right will do the trick. Over time, it'll get a little easier to seat. Now you'll need some clearance underneath, so bring the cup just slightly out over the edge of your work surface to be able to secure the pull ring. Once assembled, it's not gonna balance itself and it'll just tip over, so hold on to it. Also remember, there's nothing stopping material from coming out of the nozzle. Keep the cup vertical. It's easiest to attach a gun to the cup not the cup to the gun. Because of all that, do this only when you're ready to start spraying. All right, last step. Reattach your air hose to the gun and dial in your air pressure. Again, I'd recommend starting at 60 PSI at a bare minimum, and you're probably going to end up even higher than that. Like any other piece of spray equipment, you're going to need to play with it a bit to dial in what works best for you. Of course, you'll need actual material to really trial and error this, and we'll cover that in much more detail in another tutorial. Now again, if everything's set up properly, there should be no leak. All right, now that we have the gun assembled, we can test it out with a little dry run. First, you're going to want to get used to carrying it upside down like this. 
underslung, kind of like a briefcase for all of you that actually use briefcase. It'll take some getting used to because it's almost the exact opposite of how you'd carry a normal HVLP. Now I like to hold a short lead of hose in my opposite hand, but every now and then I'll sling the hose over my shoulder to get it out of the way. Now here's another pro tip. You can create a handy reusable whip like this one that keeps the regulator and filter close to the gun. I used to use another contraption like this that works great, but this whip is more versatile and might be a better option for you. Next, you're going to want to get used to rolling the gun and hitting the trigger in one smooth motion. The trigger should be engaged before the gun is rolled all the way over and material starts hitting the mold. Pull the trigger and roll. Pull the trigger and roll. When you're ready to spray, pull the trigger and roll. Remember how the gun works. It's a dump gun based on gravity. So you can pull the trigger upright nothing's going to come out of the gun. So don't worry about getting material all over the place. Again, it's different from an HVLP. Practice and you'll get used to it. And of course, when you need to stop spraying, do the exact opposite. Roll and release in one motion. Practice a bit and eventually it'll become second nature. Well, that's it folks. Thank you so much for watching and I hope that was a helpful review of the G100 dump gun, better understand assembly, how to handle it, and basic spray technique. Now rest assured, we'll be exercising spray technique quite a bit as we make our way through the tutorials, but hopefully that gives you a good starting point. In the next videos, we're going to continue diving deeper, including how to break it down, clean up efficiently, and perform a more complete rebuild for maintenance. Thanks again. Keep taking those creations to the next level, and I'll see you in the next one.